Hey, welcome to a GPU overclocking guide for the Alienware 14 and the GTX 765, although most of the guidance I will give is applicable to any graphics card. I should say that overclocking is done at your own risk, although as long as you are careful there should be no problems. The main risk of overclocking is overheating, so make sure that you monitor your temperatures when testing to make sure it does not go too high. I wouldn't recommend going much over 80 degrees. However, the Alienware 14 is fantastic at getting rid of the heat, so it shouldn't get that high. The main tool I'll be using to overclock is the EVGA Precision X. However, you can use whatever tool you like. Popper tools are NVIDIA Inspector, as well as MS MSI Afterburner. And what these tools do is to allow you to change the core and the memory speed from the stock settings to improve the performance of the card, while also monitoring the uh, temperature which is down here. So on the Alienware 14, the core speed is locked at 135 megahertz. And even if you can increase it, the laptop will throttle it down. If you're not interested in changing the core speed, you don't have to do the next bit. But if you want to maximize your card, I would recommend it. Basically, what you need to do is to flash your VBIOS. I will not go through this in the video as I can't record the VBIOS with fraps, but I will provide links in the description to a forum in the um, below which explains it well, as well as download links to the files. The flash basically unlocks the graphics card to allow you to tweak it fully. So basically going on to how to overclock. So as I said, it's now currently at zero, zero, and it depends what tool you use, um, but they all kind of start obviously at zero. And what you want to do um, basically is push these as far as you can get before you get artifacting. And what basic artifacting is, is where you have those kind of colorful lines going across the screen where pixels just don't work properly. So what I, what I advise you to do is slowly tweak these up and use a benchmarking tool such as this one I use which is 3D, 3D Mark 11 which I got on Steam for about £3.50 the other day which is a fantastic value although you could download a demo version and what you'll be using is Firestrike although most, well not most games but a lot of games these days do come with their own benchmarking um, tools so you could perhaps say like Tomb Raider has a benchmarking tool, so you could run a game on a certain level, so Ultra for example, and then see what happens when you increase the clocks and the memory um, and see how well it runs or what it improves as, and if there's any errors that come up. And what would normally happen is the display driver would normally crash if you do push it too far, in which case you can throttle it back. So in this instance, I actually know what settings I can run my computer at, but what I'd advise you to do first is move the GPU clock upwards now, how far you push it to, um, to begin with is, is up to you. But what I would advise is, now the, before I actually go into this, it's worth saying that every computer overclocks differently. What I get, you may not get, or you may get a lot better than I do. Um, so, you know, the components vary yeah, a lot. So what I do is I would push the GPU clock up at 50 a time, so you can just type in here, to begin with and just apply it. Now this may take a long time. You could do it the easy way and just push it all up and then work your way back, but I wouldn't advise doing that. So you push it up bit by bit and then you run the um, the benchmarking tool, whatever you use, be it the game or the uh, the 3D mark tool here. And then monitor the score uh, and obviously see if it uh, crashes or anything. If it doesn't crash and the scores are better, then you push it a bit more until you get to the point where either the display drivers um, crashes or you start to see spots in or, or artifacting in the uh, benchmarking tool. In which case, I'll just push it back slightly. And you, you can go into smaller and smaller increments the closer you get. So, you know, after 50, perhaps go to 20 or 10 or 5 and then 2 and 1. Once you've found a kind of safe level there, you can then move on to the memory clock and try pushing it up bit by bit. Um, to give you an idea of where I, I, you know, I get my um, benchmarking to, so I can push this all the way up to, what settings here, 120. And the memory clock I can get up to 675. Now, when I run that, so for example, Fire Strike, I, I think I believe it's 2400 score with uh, the card running at stock. Once I overclock it, I can get up to 2970. So there's a um, 500 or so increase, which is fantastic. Um, but before I even got to this point, obviously I would be down to you know 200, then 250, then 300, and 350. And I got to about 750 and I thought that's too high, so I pushed it down a bit more. 
And so once you've found a kind of safe level, you then basically tweak this up and this down and this up and this down until you find a kind of safe level where the card is performing to the standard which you like, but without the crashes and the artifacting, etc., etc., etc. Whilst keeping an eye on the temperature. So um, here it's only 49 degrees Celsius. Obviously, when you're running a game, um, it or benchmarking tools, it would increase. As I said before, if it goes over 80, I would start to kind of throttle it back a bit. It can go up to 90, but uh, you know that's nearly boiling temperature, in which case you'll probably feel the heat through the keys. Um, but I've never had it that high, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, you're probably more likely to have the computer crash before you get that high. So, as I said, you then tweak it literally, literally by 5, 2, 1, until you find a safe level. And then what I would do is pull it back slightly. So pull it back a couple, you know, maybe two or two on this, just to make sure you're on the safe side. There is, um, uh, you can alter the voltage, but I can't seem to be able to. I'm not sure if the 765 is locked. The V flash I did doesn't affect voltages for some reason. So uh, if you could, you could increase this to allow the GPU clock to be pushed higher. But I don't have that at the moment, and you may not. So I wouldn't touch that. That can also fry your GPU, so I wouldn't necessarily mess around with that unless you know what you're doing. So um, once you've got it up and running, so I said I'll put mine to uh, 120, which is where it can run, and uh, 675. You can then apply that, and they said depending on what tool you're using, you can have it boot up a startup. Therefore, when I start the computer up, it will run with these settings. Now, obviously, the bad bit about this is that Obviously, you're pushing your GPU all the time, and it may or will, sorry, decrease the life of the card. What you also could do is turn that off and uh, load this up before you play a certain game that you want to play, and then put the settings on and apply. Um, however, the stress tests don't really end there because you can have it all working fine. You'll be then be playing a game, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe a week later, and you'll start getting out artifacting. In which case. Just go back into your um, into your tool and just pull it back, even just you know two or five maybe, uh, just until that goes. Um, as I said, different games um, work different ways, um, but I said the performance gain of overclocking your card is it's, it's fantastic really. So you could push you know a seven six five to the clocks of a seven seventy, you know if you're lucky. Um, so or even one of my subscribers said a seven eighty, but I'm not too sure about that, but. There we go. Um, it's not really much more else to say. Of course, if you've got any questions, or if you, I, I'm very good at answering. I normally respond within a few hours, as long as I'm not asleep. Um, but that's basically it. Obviously, be careful and enjoy. Thank you ever so much for watching.